Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. A big development today in Donald Trump's ongoing quest to turn the Republican Party into a vehicle for his own authoritarian aspirations. Of course, the former president continues to exert this power over the Republican Party with a litmus test he created for Republican politicians after his ignominious defeat. And the question, the single question they must answer is, did they support his attempted coup? And would they support a coup in the future? And if the answer is no to either question, they're in trouble. We're seeing this again today. How Donald Trump has set his sights with complete monomaniacal focus on this question above all other issues. You remember Trump's now legendary bullying of Georgia's Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger. Trump called him in early January asking him to just find 11,000 votes to change the outcome of the race in Georgia. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. So what are we going to do here, folks? I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. As we all know, Raffensperger refused to participate in the coup. Not even clear what he could do if he wanted to, but he refused to find 11,000 votes. And so Raffensperger now has a Trump-endorsed primary challenger. You're next. Secretary of State, a friend of mine, somebody has done a phenomenal job, Jody Heiss. Jody, come here. And Jody is running against one of the worst Secretary of States in America, Rhino Brad Rathensberger, who is trying to turn the tables on me because I'm fighting for election integrity. To be honest, I was surprised. Here's a congressman who's loved in his district, who's got no problems, no election problems. They could be there forever. And he said, I want to do this because what's happened to the state of Georgia is a disgrace. So Brad Raffensperger doesn't support the coup despite repeated bullying by Trump. Uh, and Trump backs a primary challenger to get rid of Brad Raffensperger so there will be a more coup-pliant replacement. It's a single-issue primary challenge. Raffensperger refused to cave to the demands he steal an election he must now be removed. And as you heard Donald Trump imply there, it's also fair to conclude that Jody Heiss would pass the litmus test and participate in the coup. In fact, he was one of the 147 Republicans who voted to overturn the election results on January 6th, just hours after the insurrectionists had been cleared out of the Capitol. So that's a central issue here. It's, it's why Jody Heiss is running. It's why he's been endorsed. He has essentially promised he will deliver an election for Trump. He will even steal it. He will be a good, loyal foot soldier in the next coup. Well, today, Donald Trump has set his sights on another statewide office holder in Georgia, Governor Brian Kemp. Now, Kemp, you might remember, used to have Brad Raffensperger's job, the Secretary of State. And in that role, he made all sorts of changes, including closing polling places, purging voters from the role, and putting 53,000 voter registration applications on hold just before the 2018 election when he was running for governor. On election night, Kemp beat Democratic challenger Stacey Abrams by a margin of about 54,000 votes. She contends that margin was basically due to the changes he had made as Secretary of State to suppress the vote. So in Brian Kemp, we are not talking about a guy with a stalwart commitment to ballot access, Democratic integrity. In fact, he has a reputation for just the opposite. But like Brad Raffensperger, Brian Kemp refused to actively foment a coup despite the fact that, like Brad Raffensperger, he also was on the receiving end of a call from Donald Trump asking him to do so. And ever since, Trump has been trying to get rid of him, too. In September, when Trump held a rally in Georgia, he hinted that Kemp would be primaried and that he had a candidate in mind. Your rhino governor, Brian Kemp, who's been a complete disaster on election integrity. A complete and total, and I'm not looking to say that, I'm not looking to say that. He's been a complete and total disaster on election integrity. With us tonight, a friend of mine and a great senator, a man who, I don't know, are you going to run for governor, David Perdue? Are you going to run for governor? Where's David Perdue? Stand up, David. David Perdue. Are you running for governor, David? Did I hear he's running for governor? Thank you, David. He's a great guy, and he loves this state, and he's done a fantastic, a fantastic job. 
Of course, Purdue can run for governor because he lost that Senate race quite infamously. Now, last week, Stacey Abrams announced she's running for governor again, a, a rematch being set up 2018. And in response, Donald Trump issued this deranged, unhinged statement, quote, Stacey the hoax Abrams has just announced she's running for governor of Georgia. I beat her single handedly without much of a candidate in 2018. I'll beat her again, but it'll be hard to do with Brian Kemp because the MAGA base will just not vote for him after what he did with respect to election integrity and to horribly run elections for president and then to Senate seats. But some good Republican will run, and some good Republican will get my endorsement, and some good Republican will win. Well, <laughs> you probably know where this is going. Lo and behold, some good Republican has raised his hand. I'm David Perdue. I'm running for governor to make sure Stacey Abrams is never governor of Georgia. To fight back, we simply have to be united. Unfortunately, today, we are divided, and Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger are to blame. Look, I like Brian. This isn't personal. It's simple. He has failed all of us and cannot win in November. Instead of protecting our elections, he caved to Abrams and cost us two Senate seats, the Senate majority, and gave Joe Biden free reign. Think about how different it would be today if Kemp had fought Abrams first instead of fighting Trump. What does that even mean? Just minutes ago, as if it were coordinated, the official stamp for approval from Donald Trump came in. He released this statement, never missing a chance to knock the current governor. Quote, Kemp has been a very weak governor. The liberals and rhinos have run all over him on election integrity and more. David Perdue has my complete and total endorsement. He will not let you down. Will not let you down. That's not about the people of Georgia. It's about Donald Trump because it's about one thing. David Perdue knows it. He can say his campaign is about whatever the heck he wants. It exists for one reason, to remove Brian Kemp and replace him with a Republican who will participate in Donald Trump's next coup. That's not hyperbole. That is just the plain facts as they appear before us. Incumbent politicians, to be clear, rarely get primaried unless they are in really disastrously dire straits. Incumbents generally run for re-election with the blessing of their party, usually because they control the state party if they're the governor, and because they have the name recognition and they have the notorious power of incumbency behind them. You do not replace an incumbent if you can avoid it normally. The exceptional problem happening with this incumbent, of course, isn't anything Kemp did policy-wise. It is the failure to pull off a coup for Donald Trump, to alter the trajectory of American democracy away from election by the people, and towards an authoritarian dictate from above of who gets to be the next president. And so David Perdue can make noise about election integrity all he wants, which is just a euphemism. That's not what he's running on. He is running on a platform of Brian Kemp didn't pull off Donald Trump's coup. He did not take the shot at American democracy, but I will. That's it. End of story. That's what this election is about. Donald Trump's monomaniacal focus on the pro-coup litmus test is working. We are seeing it. State after state, office after office, part of a broad assault on the basic mechanics of democracy and representation. As the Washington Post reported, Trump allies are working to install their supporters, like David Perdue, quote, in key election posts across the country, part of a wave of Republican contenders who've embraced the former president's false assertions about the 2020 election. Donald Trump is looking for collaborators. He wants collaborators for his next run at American representative government to destroy it, and he's getting them in droves.